arguably the most amount of questions that I get is, Mike, how did you build that? And I don't have a straight answer for it because I build each one individually based on what I'm working with at the time. Like this uh, Namco GunCon for PlayStation, now a laser tag pistol. Uh, this uh, Walmart pistol that has recoil action, turned it into a prop for my Captain America costume. Uh, this long shot here, one of my first recasings I ever did, utilized the clip system as a battery pack. Uh, the LTX DMR. Um, arguably one of my uh, most visible modifications that's out there now. Um, all of these have different construction processes to them, but they all share a bunch of basic, uh, basic methods that I utilize to build these. Now, I'm going to share these with you, but you won't be able to build a pulse rifle overnight, but these are certainly things you can hone over time just as I have. So I'm hoping to help you get some ideas on how to make your next recasing based off of the experience that I've had with mine. Here's some basic tools you're going to need before you get started. First and foremost, a soldering iron. It's a cheap one you can get from Radio Shack, but any soldering iron will do. And to go along with that, you're going to need solder of some kind. You actually need to solder if you're going to be using a soldering iron. It's, it's essentially this, uh, this silvery, wiry material that is going to melt on contact with your soldering iron when you're welding your wires together for whatever recasing you're going to be doing. Also get a small screwdriver set. Um, there's, you know, there's a lot of screws in here and stuff like that for mounting stuff. Uh, liquid tape. I use this to uh, seal up my connections because the last thing you want to have is a bunch of exposed connections floating around in here because if those wires get crossed then you can cause some problems internally for your laser tag blaster. Uh, hot glue guns, pretty much standard issue for any nerf mod or anything like that. Um, hobby clippers or an exacto knife, I use both just depending on uh, what the work is calling for. But if you don't have these, you're going to have a hard time doing any sort of recasing, um, regardless of how good you are with a Dremel. Oh, a Dremel is probably a good thing to have on hand too, um, for cleaning out areas of the internals inside your case for uh, wherever you need stuff like your lens or a speaker or the motherboard. Now you need to choose what blaster you're going to put inside your recasing. Uh, choosing something like the LTX Phoenix right off the bat is going to be tough to do. I didn't tackle one of these until I had done three years of recasings and it still caused me all sorts of headaches thanks to how complex the system is. Main things you're going to want to look for is how many functions are on the blaster. I mean this guy we've already got trigger, shield, reload, um, all kinds of switches, a multi-pole on off switch. I mean there's a lot to deal with here. So, an LTX to start off with is probably not the best idea. This is Laser Challenge brand that has an on off switch, has a reload button, a reset button that we can probably do without, and a trigger. It's also got lights, sound, and the emitter. That's, uh, you know, that's, that's simplified enough where that can serve as something to use for our first recasing. I realize, though, that the problem that most people will run into is Laser Challenge isn't really out there anymore. So, um, if you want to do a recasing with, with something simple, Laser Challenge is something good to test it out on, but if all you have is a bunch of LTXs and stuff like that, then uh, please be careful. They're good blasters. Don't ruin one. When you're picking something out for your recasing, it's good to try and go with something that already has electronics in it. Um, this PlayStation light gun would work well, but the problem is it doesn't actually have a battery, uh, a power supply that's already in it. Um, but you could just as easily build one in there. It's just that uh, accessing it later on is maybe a little bit more difficult for you to do. Um, things that have battery doors, like these Nerf blasters I have here, the Raven, the uh, the Night Finder, the Stampede, the Firefly. These are all great candidates because they have easy to access battery doors on them. Um, you also want to match up. Um, your blaster with whatever recasing candidate you're doing. For instance, if you're using an LTX for a recasing, um, you'll probably want to find something that already has the same type of power source. The LTX runs on six AA batteries. Now, that's, ju that's just six cells in general. Six AA batteries is the same type of requirement as six C cell batteries or six D cell batteries. You getting that, what I'm going for? The Stampede already has a 6-cell battery case in it, so that's why I used it for my LTX DMR. Um, when I made my uh, Firefly recasing, 
Um, it's already using two double A's to power that strobe light. I just rewired those double A's to power a laser challenge board because the laser challenge board only ran off two double A's. So um, if you're thinking about a light strike recasing, the Raven is an excellent candidate because its battery pack already has four double A's. Light strike blasters run off of <gasps> four double A's, so that'd be an excellent recasing candidate. The Night Finder here is probably one of the easiest ones to get for a simple recasing. A lot of laser challenge blasters just use two double A's. He's got two double A's that are in the in the handle there, and it's a it's very easy to uh, to revert that power supply that's going in there to work for your laser tag board. To demonstrate creative ideas that you can utilize in your recasings, I'm going to use my Red Strike long shot that I've also integrated a laser tag system into as an example. Um, not only is it the pride of my Nerf collection, but it's also one of my favorite laser tag blasters. And I'll show you how I did it. Now these are elements that regardless of whether you're going to keep the Nerf side of things intact or not, that can help you with a laser tag recasing. I'm just showing that it can be done if you utilize a blaster that has enough dead space to store the internals for your laser tag system, that you can actually have a two-in-one blaster. The trigger here is one of the uh, more unique parts of the blaster where the laser tag side and the nerf side actually kind of meet. I've got these two wires running out from behind where the normal trigger placement is. This guy is actually a small push button. You can see it there. Now, this piece was actually taken from the uh, laser tag blaster that I was recasing. You can utilize the buttons and switches that are already inside the blaster that you're using and still make use of them inside the blaster. That switch is just hot glued behind this assembly here so that way when this orange plastic piece pulls back it comes into contact with that button. So this trigger not only activates the, uh, the plunger system for the long shot but when the laser tag module is turned on it will actually come in contact with the button and fire the laser tag blaster. This means that you can technically prime the long shot and fire both a nerf dart and a laser tag shot from this. But, you know, if you're just going to be using it for a laser tag battle, what's the point? So all you need to do is pull back on the trigger without this being primed, which, I mean, it, it, it's like dry firing without even having to bother with the plunger tube. This trigger pulls back and activates that switch. This next part is where nerf modifications and laser tag modifications have kind of met in the middle for a uh, unique combination. This section down here is the f lower portion of the front gun module for the long shot. This is a common modification for, uh, for long shots to cut off that lower barrel portion of the front gun and install it underneath the main barrel by cutting out the bipod section of the long shot. I utilized the shell for this case, but I decided to have it house the laser tag internals because I had to figure out how to use this barrel for nerf and this barrel for laser tag. So what I did was I utilized the front section of the, uh, of, of the muzzle for the long shot front gun integration, and instead I installed this, this black portion here is actually a cone with a infrared LED at the back, which is what fires the... Uh, the, uh, the laser, or the infrared light, if you will. And up here is housed the lens. So this is my lens assembly underneath the, uh, the main barrel, which fires the Nerf darts. Right here, Installed, um, that wire actually needs to be resoldered. That's part of the reason I got this blaster open is because I'm repairing it right now. But here is our laser tag board stored underneath the dead space underneath the main barrel. Above in the dead space, we've also got the speaker for the sound effects for this board. We also have the power supply stored underneath the dead space in, in this blaster. And up here, these two wires actually run to a red light that actually goes inside this piece of red uh, orange plastic. The orange plastic is actually kind of translucent, so when the blaster fires, the front tip of here actually glows red. It's a neat effect. I've also managed to install the power switch, which is, I, I cut a small notch in this portion of the, uh, of the shell, so that way this switch can actually 
uh, peek through there. The reload button is one of the few changes I had to make to the outside of the blaster. You can see it here. Um, it's located just above the trigger so that way it's easy to access when you're firing. But this button is just a simple, um, this is just a simple button you can pick up from Radio Shack. And all you do is you solder in the wires on these two connections on the back and then drill a hole where you want the button to come through and slide them on through. There's a washer that goes around the outside of this button that you screw onto the top to secure it in place. Activation is real simple. Here's where the normal trigger hand would be. You go up here to press the reload button and fire. One of the more intricate parts about building this blaster was routing the wires from the laser tag portion, which is mainly stored up in the front of the blaster, to the buttons for the trigger and the reload. To install those, I actually removed this panel here and hid all of those wires behind where the clip would go in so that way they don't interfere when the clip is getting installed into this blaster. And then I drilled a little bit into the, uh, the structure of the long shot's internal housing here to allow those wires to have a route to come back here. I'm going to remove the trigger here so you can actually see where all these wound up. There we are. There's the button in there. And behind here, you can actually see where Ooh, I've got the screw still. Well, you can see I've installed the uh, the reload switch that I showed you. In the end, your blaster will work through a bunch of trial and error. Making sure that things fit as you're installing them is an important part of making sure that uh, things come together well. If you are building your blaster and things are going great and then you go to close it all up and nothing fits, then all the work that you've done is for none. So I would suggest testing your blaster as you go along to make sure that things function. Let's check this guy out. Nerf side seems to be working just fine. Let's turn it on. Power switch is on. Reload. Fire. Red fire indicator up there. Speaker's working. Emitter's working. We got ourselves a fully functional two-in-one Nerf blaster and laser tag blaster. So, uh, yeah, if you've got more questions, um, even if they're just specific to something that you're building, I'll be more than happy to get to those. We'll see you guys later.